dead right here real quick. If you gotta respect your opponent's punish game when they're a zoner trapper character and they're not known for their combo game, you might be a low tier. It's what I remember, man. It's like as we get into the set here, Seabass versus Whale Loser semifinals, our last best of three of the night. I remember, man, at the beginning of this game, we all thought like, oh my god, Ganondorf is better than Captain Falcon until we all realized like, yeah, okay, yeah, he still can't recover. Man, but that's twice in a row. That's $20 million, which is stomp the puppy for $10 million right there. That's what I'm talking about. When you're actually close, it's a different story. But, you know, I was only thinking about the neutral in terms of how on paper Isabel should just pretty much hold that down. But as you mentioned, all stage, it's a whole different... Different boat, but it's also a very different boat on the other end of that spectrum when your recovery does not have a hitbox and is also not invincible. If there's anything that consistent viewers of DNA.exe should be familiar with, it's that Sivas is very good at timing down air, and especially so on characters that take a little bit to get to the ledge. Mm hmm. Amen. That offstage presence is definitely not too keen for either of these characters. I feel like both of these characters, uh, if they're lucky, will destroy each other off of the level right there. On stage, it might be a little bit different if Seabass is not able to use what little mobility Ganon has to be able to get around the trapping. That is where I definitely picture Whale being able to do the most work in this matchup, at the very least on paper for sure, is when you're actually on stage and keeping that mid-range distance. Up close, doing stuff like that, Holding in against a Ganondorf with two slingshots in a row, that's pretty risky right there. But the stuff I want to see right here, stalling himself in the air right there with the neutral air, just giving it There we go. Uh -huh. I feel like there are so many instances in this matchup, Hangman, and we're going to see so many of them, which I'm very excited to see, where both of these characters just crap on each other. <laughs> oh, but that's not what I want to be seeing. Not from the way I'll be inwards, uh... Air dodge. We already saw how well that benefited well when that habit was taken out. Oh? Uh, oh. We're just gonna jump into those now? If you say so. I mean, hey, it's your game to die for, I guess. I really said my, my camera, camera the, the second, second he did it. <laughs> 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 uh, it's okay. Oh, the power of HD instant replay and glorious HD perfection. Let's take a look at it right here once again at this matchup as these replays go on here. Here's the second See, that's a spectacular spacing at the ledge. Just time and time again showcase, like, why he's able to get this deep in bracket with this character. Oh! Oh, yeah, that's no. what happened? Yeah, no, it was just a really poorly chosen landing from Whale, and Cedas was truly perfectly spaced. Like... Mm. There you go. I'm the best. Yeah, this... Looking like a damn Bowser player, except it was with a smash attack. It's just how it goes. <laughs> I mean, it's that's what Ganondorf needs to do to keep a leg up in a matchup like this, and that was just expertly showcased by Seabass. Now the honest is on Whale, if Whale can adjust gameplay, because I think with Final Destination at their disposal... If Whale really cranks up the heat on the projectile end of this game, I think they'll be able to try to bring this back. But they got a bit of a, a hill to climb on this one, Tumas. Yeah, they definitely do. I mean, especially here on FD, which is a very interesting pick on the part of Whale. I have a feeling that maybe they don't want their landings to be a little bit more linear, if you would. Ganondorf, if you know, you're not careful against this character. The character does have range. It's just insanely committal range in moves like Smash Attack. They're heavy disjoints for sure, and that'll kill you at all sorts of wonky percents. But now, I think what happened is that Seabass, uh, not Seabass, excuse me, Whale, is probably thinking about that last kill and how they got stuck on the back of the platform Ooh. and that up smash takes the stock right there, stun out of the jab. Now they don't have to worry about getting stuck on platforms too much and not really having the quick options to get away from situations like that, because you know Seabass is going to be going for that uh, option coverage on platforms. The shield pressure from uh, Whale I find to be especially interesting. Like, opting for jab is typically like something that Isabel will do to elicit a reaction. But wow. catching the roll there, now that's how... Okay, there's like a lot of like little things here and there where it's like it's working out super well for Whale, and then there's other situations that are just really, really dangerous. Yeah. But I think the, the lack of options from the ledge here and the fact that Whale's been so persistent with forcing the battles at the ledge is really starting to hurt Seabass. I'm actually really interested to see what the stage pick, uh, pick bands were for this because letting Isabel to FD is a very risky choice. 
It certainly is, you know, with no platforms to be able to, you know, use a sort of an escape route. It's definitely an interesting one was prepared to tech nothing, unfortunately. Yeah. Was Seabass right there. Yeah, you saw he was even going for some seemingly really, you know, classic and patented, like, telegraph ledge trapping on the part of Isabel. You're gonna see, like, one of the things that happened here earlier is that Isabel just put that, uh, Lord Rocket right at the ledge as this unfortunate situation was just not prepared to tech and that's... charged a forward smash from a oh, mile that's... away. If we can get the replay of that last kill one more time, that's actually such a sad situation because it wasn't so much that Seabass wasn't prepared to tech. It was that there was nothing to tech. The grab from the fishing rod actually broke midway through, preventing Whale from being able to throw. Seabass not recognizing this buffers an air dodge. That's really sad, <laughs> because it's just a matter of Isabel's tools not working right, and Seabass paid the price for it. If Whale on any plane of existence meant to do that, I would like to frame it in a museum in one of those like big glass like cube containers that they have in like the Museum of Natural History or like the Liberty Science Center whatever for that massive brain because it should just be on display for everybody to see right there that actually makes a lot more sense when you put it that way if anything I thought the fishing rod just dragged him down and that whale just meant to do that from the beginning I totally well, forgot to be, about the throw that's, to that's be fair right. down throw forward throw and up throw from the fishing rod would have put them in that situation where Seabass would have needed to tech but letting go is <laughs> happened to have just been like the best option as a whole regardless we're moving into battlefield for game three now we had seen that that whale was able to play the stage well it's just like Seabass was able to play it better so i am curious to see if a little bit of momentum behind whale is going to be just the edge that they need to take this away from Seabass or if the presence of platforms is going to be putting the King of Evil back on top. You know, it's not even so much the presence of platforms, Hangman. It's more so going to be about how Whale maneuvers around them. You know what I mean? Like, there are so many situations where, like, Whale can just sort of plop themselves on that platform when, frankly, they really don't have to, and it's not a good thing to be around. You know, just being above your opponent in Smash in general is never a good thing. Plopping yourself on those things when there is a Ganondorf nearby is definitely not the best of positions to possibly be in. So I'm going to to sum that up and put it in layman's terms for you all. It's not even necessarily the platforms. It's how you use them. That's really the important thing right here, because if Whale uses them in too passive of a fashion, hey, that there's neutral air does take the stock. Yeah, that, that, there's the Nair, but that is not what, no, that is not what you meant. You were talking about Gimps, weren't you? Not just raw kills off the side. No, we can do that if it's fresh. And right. in general, it's just a, it's a really nice close range option. Yeah, I mean, it does come out pretty quick. I will say that, you know, it's definitely one of Isabelle's like, you know, like better burst options for sure, especially in the air. And the ledge coverage, once again, Lord Rocket is right there for the coverage. Uh, Z-Bass not prepared for it. Platforms, none too much helping him out so far, at the very least in terms of utilization. You see Isabel just still maintaining that more so grounded, zoning-based, stage control, and neutral game right here. I am just creating this wall right now as Ganondorf literally and metaphorically bursts through it. Beautiful stuff. So, that interaction right there, inevitably leading to the death of Whale's first stock is why I was highlighting neutral air as opposed to just the projectile pressure. We've seen that Seabass is really, really solid with timing, not just approaching with shield, but reacting at a parry. And parrying projectiles leaves Isabel in a really poor situation. So if she's not giving Seabass that kind of opportunity, all of a sudden a lot more of this pressure is just more sound. Mm-hmm, for sure. I mean, with well, a character as slow as Ganon, you know, you definitely, as that up smash takes the stock. You're gonna, you might sometimes need to rely on stuff like that to be able to break the zone of Isabel for sure. But that's the thing, once Ganondorf is in and hitting with downers like that, you see him trying to set up 50-50s and, uh, what am I trying to say? Yeah, just set up 50-50s and frame traps for sure, as Ganondorf definitely thrives to create. Oh, and a no. beautiful stuff saying, you got a little too scared in the corner, oh, my friend. No. Open that shield. I got to myself a command grab, and I am not afraid to use it. Seabass down, but not out. We're on our last stock, Hangman. Yes, we're on our last stock, and Whale is in the driver's seat right now. The Honest is on Seabass to try and just take this away. I'm sure there's not going to be leading into much, but a little bit of damage does go a long way. I was bringing this up uh, as we had the pregame for this set. It just takes a few interactions, and Seabass has this. So even though, like, Whale has been in full command of this game three, just a little bit of guess behind Seabass could be enough. 
but with this extended ledge play, I don't know if we're going to be seeing that type of an opportunity. Yeah, we're just going to have to wait, and so will Seabass right now, just slowly waiting for an opportunity. You got to remember, Ganondorf can bring back games from the depths of hell right there. If the Lloyd Rocket was not there in the middle of the stage, this Isabel could have died, because you know for a fact he wanted to run up and just cover that platform with that forward smash and take it out. That's going to do Ooh. it right there. That catch was crucial to ending that game right there. Beautiful stuff. Even more Isabel on the way, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe not crucial, because, you know, he was only at 50%. He probably wouldn't have been able to get the kill later on if he was able to hold down the neutral like, like he was for pretty much this entire game, if I'm being completely honest. But Seabass never even had the chance to be able to close out that game right there, bring it back despite all the rage as we take a look at these replays once again. Ugh, beautiful jab right there to get into the up smash. Just not prepared for it. That's the kind of stuff that'll only work once. You know what I mean? Until they're prepared for it. I would like to point out that it was Seabass who put Whale into loser's side as we entered the uh, top 16 for tonight's tournament. So oh, I didn't good know. on Whale for uh, securing some well-earned revenge and bringing themselves into the top three as we step into the best of five territory against Reflection. This is going to be a bit of a rough ride for Isabel. Yeah, Joker. <laughs> Let how do I love thee? Let me count the ways. 